Today I want to take you through a quick guide on how to make a small cheap pond but more importantly how to filter it so you always have clean clear water. G'day my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you please subscribe and check out my website ozponds.com. This small pond holds approximately 1000 litres the water is circulated with a low volt 500 litre per hour pump and it's being filtered via a DIY bog filter. I think for anyone new to the hobby or looking to build a pond, creating a small setup like this is perfect as it's cheap and will teach you lots about how to filter water. And an added bonus, while you're learning, you'll get a ton of enjoyment. So our little pond started off with me, my daughter and the dog digging a rectangle hole. We used the excavated dirt to create a garden bed along the front of the house. It's since grown in quite a bit and blocks out the ugly air conditioner unit. I built a simple rectangular frame out of treated pine plinth board. We then dug out the hole more to match the plinth board and lined it with EPDM rubber. The liner we used on this pond was three quarters of a mil thick and I got it on clearance so it was cheap. Now this was a few years back and I can't quite remember the exact amount I paid. There are cheaper alternatives to EPDM rubber which I would consider when building a small pond like this. I'll leave some links down in the description of some of the alternatives that I would consider. Keep in mind you can turn anything that will hold water into a small pond. Anyway, back to this pond. I then nailed another plinth board frame over the top of the bottom frame. Uh, that's now hidden by the liner. We then added a few rocks, eight goldfish, a water lily, a couple of tassel cord brushes, and a solar fountain. I thought I was done, but I was wrong. The water went green and I couldn't see anything past an inch or two. Now I had read that this was normal and eventually the pond would find its own balance. The articles told me I just needed patience. Well, I think I waited a whole year and then I decided this is BS. I just want to see my fish. So I started learning about bog filters and the role bacteria plays in keeping ponds safe for the fish, but also crystal clear. My pond went from green to this in about two weeks after adding a cheap DIY bog filter. So if you'll bear with me, I'll tell you how the filter works and how you can easily build one for yourself. The first thing to know is that fish produce ammonia. Ammonia is actually toxic to fish. Ammonia is also a source of energy or food for plants. Now nature is pretty remarkable and life seems to almost always find a way. So when my pond went green, it was because single-celled algae grew to consume the ammonia being produced by the fish. The pea soup green water was actually keeping the water safe for the fish. We don't want pea soup green water. We want water that's crystal clear. To achieve this, we need something that can process ammonia faster than the single-celled algae. That something is nitrogen processing bacteria it can be called beneficial bacteria, nitrifying bacteria, even denitrifying bacteria. Different articles or experts will call it different things. But without going crazy scientific, the bottom line is that these nitrogen processing bacteria take ammonia and convert it into less harmful compounds, which can then be consumed by plants or simply gas off into the atmosphere. This process is called the nitrogen cycle. The good news is that the bacteria that are responsible for the nitrogen cycle occur naturally and are all around us. You don't need to buy little packets of pond bacteria, you just need to provide them a home. And the only thing these bacteria need to create a home is wet surfaces and oxygen. So even in my pond before the bog filter, I had some nitrogen processing bacteria. They would have colonized the rocks, the liner, and every other wet surface. The problem is I just didn't have enough of them 
and that's why the single-celled algae grew to help the bacteria keep the ammonia in check. By adding the bog filter, I provided plenty of surface area for the bacteria to live on. And like I already mentioned, within two weeks the pond went crystal clear and it stayed that way for years. Now again, if you bear with me, I'll explain why a bog is so effective at keeping the water clean and clear and healthy and how we can design one for any pond. A bog filter is a man-made attempt to recreate a wetland or bog environment that's found in nature. The reason we want to recreate such an environment is because of their tremendous ability to filter water. Wetlands filter water in a variety of ways. Probably the two most important ways they do this as it relates to the pond hobbyist is one, they have a slow flow. The slow flow allows sediments to fall out of the water column and create new nutrient rich soil. This is great fertilizer and we see this in the real world where some of the most fertile land is on floodplains. By removing sediments, we remove nutrients, which means less chance of unwanted algae growth. Number two is that surface area for the bacteria. In nature, the wetlands are full of plant life and those new soil or sludge layers. All this wet surface area is a haven for the bacteria I mentioned earlier. So to build a successful bog filter, we want slow flow to allow sediments to sink to the bottom. We also want plenty of wet surfaces for the bacteria. And lastly, we want to be able to remove the buildup of sediments. The most effective way to achieve this in a homemade setting is to move water from the bottom of the bog to the top. So here we have the pump sitting inside the pond. The water is pumped into the base of the bog. The bog is filled with rock and pebbles to create that surface area for bacteria. The water moves slowly up through the rock and pebbles, allowing sediments that are heavier than the water to settle in the base of the bog. Also, as the water moves up through the bog, the bacteria are working their magic to keep the water crystal clear and fish safe. Plants can be added to help further purify the water. The clean water then spills back into the pond. So on this pond, here's how it works. The pump sits inside the pond on the opposite side of the urn, which is the clean water coming back in. The bog is in a plastic barrel and partly dug into the garden and partly covered by shrubbery. The water is pumped from the pond into the base of the barrel bog. The water moves up through the bog and returns to the pond via the decorative urn. Okay, nearly there. I'm sorry this is taking so long. I just want to give you some quick tips for the bog design so you can create one yourself. First thing, you can make the bog out of pretty much anything that'll hold water. On this pond, I used a half olive barrel. Number two, make the bog at least 10% the volume of the pond. This pond is approximately a thousand litres. The bog is a little over a hundred litres. And just for simplicity's sake, calculate the volume before adding any rock or pebble. Number three, slow flow. My simple calculation is times the bog volume by six. So in this pond, the bog is 100 litres. So the pump I'm going to use is around 600 litres. I actually used a 500 litre pump, but it was close enough. Number four, make sure you can easily clean the bog. Remember a lot of sediment is going to get trapped inside the bog. If it's just left there, at some stage the bog's going to become clogged and less effective. Here's a rough sketch of my barrel bog. There is larger rock on the bottom, getting smaller as we get closer to the top. This is going to provide void spaces for those solids to accumulate. You'll also notice there is a valve down the bottom. This allows me to flush out the bog from time to time to easily remove the solids. To create a watertight seal on the barrel, you can use a bulkhead fitting or a uni seal. I'll put some links in the description if you aren't sure what those are. There's lots of other ways to design the bog, but just make sure it's easy to clean. Number five, make it impossible for the bog to drain if the pump shuts off. 
Again, you'll notice on my bog, I have another valve slightly above the waterline. This is kept slightly open at all times and prevents the water siphoning out should the pump shut off. Because the bog sits slightly higher than the pond, the water will siphon back into the pond if the pump shuts off. To prevent this, we need to create a break. That's what that valve is doing. It's called a breather pipe and will allow air to rush into the pipe and stop the siphon if the pump shuts down. Again, there's lots of different ways to achieve this, but that's just the way I like to do it. Number six, make the outflow pipe larger than the inflow pipe. When the water comes into the bog, it's under pressure from the pump. This means more water will fit in a smaller area. As the water is leaving the bog, it's being carried away by gravity. So the same amount of water needs a larger pipe to escape. I hope that makes sense. Lastly, don't plant bog plants that have an invasive root system. It's just gonna clog the bog sooner. All I'm using in this bog is Bacopa, as it has a shallow root and it's easy for me to thin out from time to time. So once you master building your own cheap filters, you can upsize them to suit any sized pond. After building this small pond and mastering the filtration, I've since built multiple ponds around my property. The latest one is big enough to swim in. I do have plenty of videos that will go into more details on certain parts that I've touched on in this video. So if you need more info, check out the previous ones and you're bound to find one that will help. You can also email me via my website, ozponds.com. However, I do get tons of emails, so if you really need a response from me, I do ask that you leave a donation just to cover my time. But like I said, most of the time, you'll be able to find the answers you need for free by watching previous videos or reading the articles on the website. If you made it this far, well done and thank you. I really hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.